All right, David, you ready? Let's do this. Tell us about this space. So uh, we are in my stable, uh, my garage in uh, Walnut. This is where I have a lot of my red collection, my yellow collection, and the beginning of my uh, green collection. This is not a uh, public uh, museum. It's really definitely for friends and people we know, or when we have events like Cars and Chronos, which is a car show in my plaza in Walnut. We've been successful doing it every month, uh, usually on the third Saturday. Of course, my store is open, so that's where the Chronos part is. For a lot of guys to have a connection with the owner of a watch retailing shop is very rare. Our job is to provide luxury and good service. So I think providing the link between cars and watches like that I do, I, I, I think I'm the only one in Southern California that does that because I am a retailer. I think that also helps propel me to be nominated as the top uh, watch retailer of America. I was in the finalist of the the, the last five out of 200 retailers and uh, voted by our industry. I mean, it means a lot because in two years, um, our company, our family company, jewelry company, will be 60 years old. So when I uh, took the helm of it 30 years ago, I had to change the business. I had to uh, modify and, uh, in, and change with the time, change with the demand of the industry and, and the market. And I, I'm happy to say that I have brought maybe our business to a hundred times what it used to be when I took over. We had never done retail before. That was kind of my contribution to change the business model to do retail. And in that, there was a lot of learning because we'd never really done that before. The thing that I thought was very important that helped my growth was a peer-to-peer -peer business group, right? Uh, of course, I joined YPO, which was the Young President Organization, which then I learned from other presidents, uh, members, and, and if I, there's something I didn't know, I could ask them. And if something they didn't know, they can ask me. Then later on, I created the CEO Club, which is a Asian uh, presidents group. And that also was very helpful to, to have like minds, to have people that have the same uh, outlook of things and to be able to help each other. So a lot of people ask me, David, can you give me advice how I can be successful? Well, I say a real, a reality, a real realistic way of doing it, and I've seen that it's been successful for many people, is first to identify what your passion is and go and work for a company that is in that business, the best company in that, in that industry. Build yourself up, show performance, and look around, have your eyes open to see what is kind of uh, businesses that the, the company you're working for will not take on because it's too small, it's a little bit off from what their lane is, but maybe that's something that you can do, that you could take on. Then if you go off and start your own company to pursue the areas that the company that you work for did not want to pursue, and maybe the clients will come to you, maybe other coworkers that you know are good will come to you and, and, and work for you to build from that. That is a realistic way of knowing what you're getting into, having some uh, resources, and having really a good foundation. Everything has synergy. Everything I do has synergy. In, in my investment division of my group, uh, I had created uh, the brand and owned the brand Monza Design. So when we design for Monza, we design what kind of watches that person would wear, what kind of jewelry that person would wear, what kind of eyewear that person would wear, what kind of clothes, apparel that person would, would wear, what kind of car they would drive, what kind of accessories they would use. You know, being in, in luxury retail for 30 years, I do understand luxury a, and uh, Monza design would be no different. It would embody that same luxury experience, same customer experience that we know to offer from Hingwali Jewelers. And of course, eyewear is one of the first launches. These Monza design eyewear have a lot of homage to automotive, kind of classic automotive look. And again, if it's a product, Monza Design will have the same synergy as my other businesses. So that same customer service, customer experience, luxury will be experienced by any of the Monza Design products. What do you think cars and watches have in common? What is the common link between cars and watches? A lot of people, they, they buy these possessions, watches or cars, and they just have it as a possession. 
I, I call it like art piece because they're just looking at it. They're admiring it and so forth. And that's, that's really um, one area of the passion, you know? But I think what cars or even watches are made to, to be made to be worn, they're made to be moving, not kept in the plastic. Just like cars are made to be driven and so that you can experience all the visual emotion and the feeling that you get from driving the car, which you cannot get just by looking at it, you know. It's almost like you get part of it, but not all the way. But once you start driving it, you, you do. And, and driving on the track, which is what the cars are made for, that's very exciting to me. <laughs> asked me about that if my company were willing to be sponsored and I of course quickly wanted to support my my bro and uh, but not only that to also understand um, racing from that perspective you know because I would be involved I would understand more about what it takes to be effective in, uh, in the race and to win even you know a lot of people that don't know racing so much they focus a lot on the drivers you know and that's obvious you know, the driver and how they do, but really it's, it's a lot to do with the team and the team support. And, and so it's not just the driver because if it was just the driver and he didn't have the team support, he would not win anything. So that part, all the different personnel that, that help in different areas and all the dynamic that happens in, um, in a race that the team members have to deal with, is quite incredible that I that you don't know unless you're in the background and seeing it. And so there was a lot of lot of things, but I think this focus, this uh, about excellence, about perfection, about perseverance, all that uh, has a lot of alignment with the values of Ping Wali Jewelers as well. So you spent years and years to get to where you are now, and I would say it's very successful. But but has anything changed now you've gotten to this level? What what is your mindset now and how do you move forward? You know, a lot of people measure success by financial. And I think eventually as people get a certain amount of success, they they look into their legacy. You know, what does this mean? Does a lot of people consider you a good friend? Do you do you are you involved in their lives? Are you involved with your family's lives? You know, you, you, you give yourself to other people's lives. For me, I have a personal interest in family businesses. And it looks like, it looks like, and I'm second generation, and it looks like my son, he's gonna join the family business to be the third generation. And so, understanding that legacy and that um, of, of our family business is wonderful, and maybe one day it'll get to 100 years old. 